You don't have to look very far to find movies with a redemption theme. I mean, truthfully, if you look at the movies that are in our current culture and in our media, most of them have some kind of a redemption theme to them. They have somebody in the story who has found themselves in a place where they think all hope is gone, where they feel like nothing they do is good enough or, or nowhere they go will be the right place, or they've started to doubt themselves, or they've found themselves in that position where they think it's just not worth going on anymore. So it was pretty easy for me, the first clip in this series about redemption, because I have to tell you, the scene where Mufasa comes out of the cloud and speaks to Simba and says, remember, remember who you are, has been one of my favorites for a long time. It's laced with this reminder, this reminder of the image of God <laughs> that's inside of each one of us. That we'll find our t ourselves in times and places when we'll feel lost and we'll feel like we're unsure of what our identity is or what we're supposed to be doing or where we're supposed to be going. And in those times, there are times when we'll be running around lost feeling like if someone were to ask us, who are you? We might honestly say, I don't know anymore. So Simba finds himself in that place and then finds that a little bit painful reminder of the fact that that image of God, or that image of his Father, that's put inside of him, will ground him in remembering who he is for the rest of his life. So I don't know which part of that clip resonated with you, if that's the idea that change is never easy, it's always hard, but it always brings good things, or that idea that the past that we carry around with us, though it does hurt, and can sometimes feel like a big bump on the head, that past gives us a choice that we run from it or we learn from it. Or whether it's that simple idea that God has planted an image of God's self in you, that no matter where you go or what you do or who you think you become, there is always that opportunity to turn to a God who loved you and place that image in you in the first place and to remember from the very basic core of your being who you are. That's what we celebrate today in baptism. That's what we celebrate for Miss Emily, who's listening intently, by the way. I think it might be the colors. But she's listening intently. That's what we celebrate for her, is that inside of each one of us, inside of her, there's an image of God that, that helps to provide us with some footing, some grounding for those times in life when we feel lost. There's an image of God that... that we can't really describe. I can't tell you exactly what it is or exactly how it will work in your life because I'll admit to you that I don't fully understand how it is that God has implanted an image in each one of us. But there's a place for faith there in knowing that just as we read scriptures of God our creator, of God our father, of God our redeemer and sustainer, that there is inside of each one of us a light that shines brightly in a way that it will never go out. When I used to teach baptism to young children uh, in my past church I was in, we used to talk about it as a candle. We used to talk about it this way. If we took that candle that we lit this morning uh, to celebrate Emily's baptism, and we put it in an environment where it had unlimited wax, it could burn for as long as it had, and we put uh, something over it that provided it with enough oxygen to burn so there was never a reason for that candle to go out then that, that light that we have celebrated in Emily this morning, that light that's in each one of us, is a light that will burn brightly for the rest of her life. It would never need to be relit. It would never really need to be celebrated again. But it would be a constant force at the root of who she is, at the root of who we are, to remind us of a God who created us, loves us, and accepts us no matter how many wrong twists and turns we take in life, no matter how many times we doubt, no matter how many times we wonder exactly who we are, there would be a light inside of us to remind us. So our text today comes from the Gospel of Luke. It's a text that is actually a baptism text. It's, it's a text that happens uh, when Jesus has been baptized. He's with John the Baptist and a community has gathered around them to watch this happen. And John, who has said time and time again that he won't baptize Jesus because there's no need to. Jesus should be baptizing him. Jesus has said, this is what God has told you to do. And so he's dipped in the water, and John raises him up and baptizes him. 
And in Luke 3, it says this, Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus had also been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, and you can imagine this with a big subwoofer behind it, right? A voice came from heaven and said, You are my son, the beloved, and in you I am well pleased. God speaks that voice to each one of us. You are my son, you are my daughter, my beloved, and in you I am well pleased. Because in you there is a light that burns, there is an image of God that is a gift that you didn't do anything to earn. It simply is, and it will always remind you of who you are. Now the question, it could come about that, is there really a God who celebrates all the time? That God really is pleased with us all the time? Because maybe you've found yourselves in some places in life when you think, yeah, that scripture text, that doesn't apply to me. Maybe you've found yourself in a spot where you think, this is one of those times when I wish God would just look the other way. But the striking thing about God is it's kind of like Mufasa in the, or uh, Rafiki in the movie. He just keeps showing up over and over and over again. He just keeps appearing and he won't go away. God keeps looking directly at us in those moments when we wish God would turn away. And the message is the same. You are my son. You are my daughter. My beloved. And in you I am well pleased. I don't know... Uh, how many of you have or have not been baptized in the room? I don't remember my baptism. Many of you probably don't remember your baptisms. Maybe you were baptized as an adult, and it was one of those moments that redefined life for you. In whatever way that happened for you, it is okay. And if you haven't been baptized, that gift is there for you to receive. That gift of celebrating the image of God in you. A light that burns brightly that nothing can blow out. A light that will remind you of redemption stories like this one. Because if you haven't had one yet, you will have a story someday. When God will show up in the pit of life where you feel like you're about to give up. And God will speak a word of truth to you. To remind you that you are loved. That you are uniquely created that you are special just as you are, that you are accepted with all your baggage and all your past, that you are a beloved child of God. And in you, because that image of God is planted inside of you, God is very pleased. God, we thank you for the gift of baptism. We thank you for Emily this morning, and we thank you for the times in life when you come to meet each one of us in a way that reminds us that that just like in the movie, God, there will be times when we're lost and times when we're struggling and you will show up to remind us that you've loved us more than everything from the moment we were born. God, that you have accepted us for exactly who we are on, on the moments when we struggle, on the moments when we fail, and on the moments when we feel like we should hold up a trophy and say, God, I finally did something well. God, we're not worthy of this gift of grace this gift of redemption and yet you shower upon us time and time again the gift of reminding us that that you will always provide a pathway for us to remember who we are god for that image of you in each side inside each one of us we are most thankful for that light that burns that will never be blown out we are most thankful we pray that you would open our eyes and our hearts that we might begin to see in ourselves a little bit of you and that you would give us the courage to look out into the world around us. And in every person we meet and every face we see, we might see the light, your light, in each one of them. That's all this we pray in your name. Amen.